Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel, Juliet McNeil Crafts. So today we are playing with Samantha K stuff again. I love her stuff so much and I have been itching to get my hands on this. I just think it's adorable and I think it's going to go so well with my toadstool tots. So I was delighted when this arrived through the door very very excited. So as you might have noticed normally um, my Samantha K um, videos went up on Monday at 11 o'clock but actually in response to you crafters um, having it in an evening where you can join me in your craft room and play along um, it seemed to be a better option. So now we are going to go with Thursdays at 6 o'clock um, so again fortnightly Thursdays at six o'clock. So again I'm just putting some gesso on this piece um, just to give myself a white base because I prefer working from a white base because I believe it makes my colours a bit truer when um, I am painting them and stuff like that. And I'm trying not to go too heavy because this particular MDF has sort of lines etched into it um, which add to the detail and I don't overly want to lose them so I'm trying to just go a little bit canny and not have um, too much. So I'm just going to continue to gesso this and I'll be back when it's all dry and ready to paint up. Okay so I'm back to um, doing back to do some painting and I am going to start off um, with my Dilutions paint. So I am going to give this a pink undertone. Like if you follow me you know that I like to do lots of um, layers with everything but with my paint effects I do like to still have um, the various tones. I like to have a highlight, a mid-tone and a shadow. Um, and I do think that helps to make the piece that you're making look less flat. I sometimes find with 3D projects, I know for myself, it's because I did it myself, that's why I keep saying that, that sometimes we paint it like that because we're thinking, oh, that's, that's, um, it, that's it painted, that's the colour of it. And it maybe just doesn't look as good as maybe when we colour something in and we're concentrating a bit more on our shading and shadow and stuff like that. So um, it's a lesson I've had to teach myself and it is something that I do sort of mention in every, every video. So I'm sorry if you're a bit sick of it, but that's me kind of use both my pink and my red and bringing them together and then that is, will be my highlight and my mid-tone and then I'll come in and do some extra shading with like Distress Inks with a black or something and then that will give me my um, shadow colours. So what I'm going to do is pop you on fast forward as I paint the rest of this up. had its first coat um, and I've roughly sort of coloured coloured it up but I've lost some of the details that I mentioned that were etched into the um, the project so I'm just I'm just hearing my daughter barking away poor thing she's off school today she's not feeling well so I just want to bring those back in a little bit so I'm just going to paint the details back in so I'm just following the the lines that Sam has given us. I'll probably neaten this up an awful lot more with some pen work a bit later, but just so that we've got 
something in. I think I might. I thought I'd got a finer brush, but I think I'm going to get a finer brush again. Let's see if I've got a finer brush now. See if that makes life a bit easier. So again, I am just finding the details that Sam has given us, and just putting those back in. I'm probably going to do um, like multiple shading on this as well, and I'm trying to. What I did there, you would have seen it on fast forward, is I'm also trying to keep my brush strokes going in the direction that um, that the actual thing would be. So it's like the grass is, the brush strokes are going up and the mushroom, they're coming round. So I'm trying to keep that in mind because it's probably easier to paint across like that and follow the lines. Um, but that wouldn't be how the shadowing and the shading would go on this, it would be up and down. So I'm trying to keep my strokes up and down as I fill in these um, pieces. So for example, I've got this here, which I will put in sideways like this, just to, so I can see the outline for myself. But I will fill that in by making sure that I'm flicking up so that it looks, it looks right. So we'll do that, and then again, I probably will take a bit of the bit of the brown and just shade shade the bottom parts in, so that we still have that multi-tonal effect. So I've just got a little bit. I'm just using the tiny bits of paint that are still on my paper that's underneath, and the paper that's underneath won't go to waste. Um, it'll end up in a journal or something. I never waste anything. Me, I'm terrible. I'm terrible, I save every last little bit. <laughs> I'm a paper hoarder. <laughs> okay, so we've got another bit there, which we'll just get in. And as I said, that just, that's the detail that Sam's put in for us. So that's where we would expect um, the lighting and everything to be. And as I said, at the minute it looks a bit ropey, but we'll keep, um, we'll keep adding different elements to it until it looks until it looks right. Let's get a bit of the darker darker shading in there as well. So I'm going to do the same now with um, the door and I'm also going to make the window frame um, stand out a bit. I'm actually going to give that a bit of colour. So what I will do again is just pop you on fast forward now that I've explained that I'm sort of adding detail and I'm going in the areas that Sam has actually got a little burn mark there for us. So I'm sort of following um, what the artist has intended. So I'll just pop you on fast forward again. As I do that. dry. I've left that overnight to dry and I'm going to come in now <clears throat> and add even more shading. So I've got my walnut stain. I may go up to black suit. We'll just see. And I'm just going to add a bit more dimension into the shadow area. So as I was saying earlier, I've kind of created my mid-tone and my highlight with the paint. And now by going in and darkening up the shadow areas, I am creating that shadow. So I'm just going to do this and then we will add some details with um, a gel pen. So again, all of this just adds to the, the overall look of it. It's amazing the difference just a little bit of shading can make to a project. You don't have to worry too much about light source and stuff like that. Um, if you have a little bit of an understanding on it and um, in colouring and things, a bit of understanding on light source is fantastic. But in this sort of things, as long as you've got um, varying colours, um, I think you can get away with it. Now obviously this part of the house is under that mushroom, which is why I've gone darker. And um, that's even though the sun's maybe coming from this direction, it's covered by this mushroom. So hence why that is still in... Um, shadow. So I'm just going in with some black suit into some of these 
areas just to um, build that up. So yeah, I think that's me <laughs> running out of waffle. So there we go. I'll pop that down, down there and hopefully you can see that that has made a little bit of a difference. Now I'm going to add some detail. I absolutely adore these pens. If you're on my channel as opposed to Sam's, I will pop a link down um, to Arteza because um, these are absolutely amazing pens. I adore them. I will do a proper review on them and I do have an affiliate link but they work so well um, on on um, everything to be honest. So I'm just going to doodle in some effects onto the leaves. I'm going to add some veins to the leaves. So this is where I'm going to add my add my detail. And it's great. Uh, these come in so many different colours and I found they go over paint absolutely fine. Uh, you do need to just make sure it's dry which is why I left this overnight because the only time that I have struggled with these pens has been when the paint's been slightly wet. Um, and obviously it's not quite designed for that. Let's have some grasses coming up onto the onto the house. You can see that's kind of covering that absolutely perfectly. Right, I'm going to add some details to the wings. So this is where we're going to get um, the details. So those parts that Sam had carved in, um, this is where I can sort of bring that out properly and um, create a little bit of texture on the birds there so we can create the, the feathered texture just by adding a few little little strokes. I'll do the same on this side with this one and then we've got a we've got a brown pen as well so I can do the same with the little cockerel at the back there so I'm sort of just drawing scribbles really in the direction that the feathers would be and that's what will give it the the natural look. So I'm kind of going, like I'm curving this way as it goes around the belly and I'm curving out at the top of the tail. Okay, um, let's do some details on to the butterfly a little bit and maybe add Add some little polka dots in there. Paint obviously there was a bit thicker so I am struggling there but that is down to the paint being thicker and so probably not quite dry because you can see on the thinner bits that's colouring in absolutely fine. Okay and I'll maybe get a red pen here just to add, add some highlights. Okay so I'm now going to take one of the black ones and give these birdies eyes because that will make a whole heap of difference once we have some eyes in there and they suddenly come to life okay and I will put go over their beaks as well and then oh they're so cute so so cute okay actually I'm going to use the black go down the body of this butterfly as well because the the body tends to be black really doesn't it so let's just go down go down the body of this as I said these pens work absolutely beautifully on lots of projects and I've enjoyed using them like over my Copic colouring to add detail to outfits and things like that so when I do my review I'll show you the different things that I have done with them now white pen so let's put a little dot of white in each of those eyeballs because that will make a difference it suddenly will come to life even more okay and then what I tend to do is just draw a little white line in the darkest areas of the shading and again that's because dark colors recede to the background which pushes the lighter colors forward I'm also just going to edge the bits that Sam has etched into the into the project because you know they're there for a reason and it just that's is where the light would hit it so I'm just going to bring those out by using my white pen so yeah because um, the dark recedes in it it brings the light to the front you, by drawing a little white line on the dark areas you're making those dark areas look darker by the fact that it's got 
the contrast of the of the white. So I'm just going to go around these various elements and bring that to life and we'll, this is where we'll maybe get a bit more detail in. So I've put a little bit on, I've put a base on with the green pen. So for this I'm using a white Signa Ball um, pen. Okay, I'm just adding, adding those details in. Just a little bit of doodling. I'm not thinking about it overly. And again, I'm not thinking about light source or anything. I'm just um, adding a little bit. And it's amazing the difference um, that that can, that can make. Let's do some scribbles as well so that we've got the effect of the grass. Like so. Okay, now I'm just going to start off with the black pen, I think. And we'll just emphasise the edge of the door. So I'm basically just drawing in the groove there that Sam cut for us. Now there wasn't a groove around the window, but I just wanted there to be a blue window frame. So I'm just sort of going round with my black pen. And then just inside where I've put the black pen, I am going to then add the white as the contrast. So got that so that is all of that ready to go so I am going to do I know you've seen me do that before a few times now but I'm absolutely loving the technique so I'm going to do it again so I'm just going to grab some of my um, paper clay I've got the um, hearty soft stuff here and I'm just going to work it a little bit oops obviously got some color on my hands okay and then I'm literally just going to grab um, a ball of it and pop it, pop it through and spread it, spread it out. Actually my hand must have been quite dirty there. Okay, the fact I had Distress um, Inks, Walnut Stain and Black Soot on my hands was not helping my case there overly. So I'm just now going to pop the paper clay behind this. It's still not overly clean but... Um, I will get it with some coloured distress ink later. So I'm just literally popping the paper clay through and then I'll take the excess off like so. These are slightly bigger holes so I am just needing to make sure that we have enough excess at the back to stick that, stick that down. And we can shape it, it's still mouldable at this stage so if I've made it look really funny at the front, which I think I will have with this one, um, that's okay. We can still sort that. I'm just poking, poking all of this through and as I said then I will leave this um, to dry. This has become my new favourite technique so I'm sorry if you're sick of seeing it but it's so effective. I suppose this is what mixed media is about isn't it? It's about m mixing the various products um, that you have and your MDF it's just a base. It's like you know your card blanks or your journal page. It's it's a base for you to play on and use all the techniques and all the techniques that you maybe are used to doing in your journals or or you know your card making or anything like that they can apply here as well. So it's like transfer your skills, whatever skills you have, just you can transfer them um, into something else. You don't have to stick yourself into one particular genre and think that's you. And that is the joy of mixed mixed media. Oops, right. So I've got all that down like so. You shouldn't need glue, this will just sort of, as it dries it'll it'll stick and the advantage of paper clay is it is just that it's paper so all the mediums and things um, that you can use on paper you can use on paper clay. I'm just kind of squishing these down so that they're a shape that I like and then once that's dried because this one is a bit marked I will just go around the edges of that with some like pink distress ink or something and we'll just disguise that slightly. So I am going to leave that to dry and then I think we're almost done. I'm just going to add some of my girls um, to finish this little wonderland or little forest scene. You can just imagine it as a, like a little toadstool house at the bottom of the folk in the faraway tree or something like that. 
Okay, so I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so that's my paper clay all dry. Um, I did sort of mark um, the paper bits a little bit with the fact I'd had um, walnut stain and distress, stress, distress ink on my hands. So I'm just going to create a bit of shadowing with some pink just to sort of disguise that a bit. And I think we're still, I'm just sort of kind of going into the under areas of the, the bulbous parts because that's where the the shading would be. And uh, yeah, I've covered over some of it a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm just sort of, actually I'm going to bring a bit of the pink down over the orange as well because um, that'll blend those two colours together a little bit as well. Okay, so that's that part done. And then what I have done is I have pulled out a whole load of my, so these are from my range. These are the Toadstool Tots. It's a digital collection. And it, the main feature is these gorgeous um, mushroom girls. There's four of them in total, but I've got two of them coloured up here. We also have some little garden snails. Um, and I've got some flowers and toadstools and everything. So I've got a whole load that I had already coloured up, um, sort of ready for a future project, and I thought that they would just go perfectly with this MDF house. So I'm just going to build up um, with the elements that that we have here, so, and create a little scene. So here, I've got some scrap there. This is me working on Dawn and Julia Create at the same time, so I'm sort of recording two videos simultaneously and one, while one part's drying. <laughs> I'm working on the other part, but I'm just going to use um, some of the scrap snip art thing as instead of 3D foam, because I think it's a great way of reducing wastage. And also the 3D foam bothers me a little bit in that it's got the plastic backings, so trying to use packaging and things like that instead I think is a good thing. So um, yeah, so I'm just going to do that so I can build a bit of di dimension. I'll stick some glue on and I think just having her at the side of the house there is quite cute. So I'm going to put some to the front and then maybe have some sort of poking out from the back as well. So I like this little, this little snail. I think it's really cute. So I'm just imagining a sort of like little down the bottom of the garden. Actually, I'm sort of, I don't know why, every time with this collection that I have it out and playing, I'm thinking the folk in the faraway tree. I kind of almost want to draw a big tree um, so that we can play with that idea a little bit. Because I can just imagine this little toadstool house at the bottom of the faraway tree. I don't know, it seems very enchanted forest. <laughs> I absolutely love this. I did buy a second one as well, so I'm sure I'll be doing another project with it, but I can see me I can see me buying more. I can see me keeping Sam busy cutting cutting these little mushroom houses out because I just think they're amazing. She has some other ones I want to play with as well. She's got a fabulous like doll house looking one, which I would just love to actually decorate up and decorate all the rooms and all of that. I think that would be a really fun project. So um I think I will do that one day. Right, so at the minute I'm just going to go with my foreground um, images. I'm thinking that I might actually just pop her behind like that, like she's coming to visit. So maybe we should just, I'll do that now so that I'm getting my, getting my layout. So to do that, what I'm going to do is just pop some glue on the back here because that's what she will be sticking to and then just have her sort of like she's round the corner and coming to visit. Coming to the tea party with a little balloon in her hand. Okay, so we've got her there. Right, let's have a play. I do love these mushrooms. It's terrible, like, even if I say so myself. I do love these mushrooms. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm like, you know, uh, blowing my own trumpet. But I suppose it's good to like your designs. It's better to like them than to not like them, I suppose. But I do, I have to say this, I think this is my favourite collection so far. Absolutely love it. Sorry, I'll just move myself so I'm actually in screen as I'm doing this. So yeah, just using the remnants of this uh, snip art again to, for a bit of a dimension. And we'll stick that down like so. 
this has been a fun project. I absolutely adore this. Adore, adore it. I've got to thank Sam. Just really does do the most amazing MDF. Lots of quirky things. I've had a big parcel um, of hers arrive because um, I've ordered a load of stuff for the afternoon tea that I am hosting. So, if you're in Inverness or fancy a journey to Inverness, I'm hosting a afternoon tea. I think it's is it in a fortnight. Or next week? Who knows? <laughs> it's the 20th and the 21st. I don't know where I am in this dream of time right now. Uh, well and truly lost, I think. Right, do I want a second? A second one? Let me see. Or do I just want some flowers? That's just taking up too much of the. Oh yeah, we could have her peeking out the background there. Okay, let's do that. And then I'm also thinking what I might do is just grab some acetate and let's have some of the flowers sort of springing out from, from behind. So let's see, where should we put her? Just about there so that she's coming off the edge. Okay, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of acetate. Okay, so I've cut, I've already made one, but I'll do one on camera. So I've cut um, a long strip of acetate and taped it to a flower. So all I've done is I've cut into my flower petals slightly, just so that I can um, shape them a little bit, which will give them a little bit more um, dimension. So it just kind of gives that extra extra element and then what I've done is I've taken some red liner tape just because it's really really strong I'm not I'm not actually going to peel the backing off um, but I just know that it's going to stick really well and with a wet glue I would have to leave it ages to dry and I can't be bothered <laughs> so tape will do so I'm thinking that if we have some sort of like flowers poking, sort of wibbly wobblying out the, out the back. So I've kept, I've deliberately made the acetate quite long so that I can have a fiddle with what I would quite like to do here. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's quite good. So I'll turn that round. Oh, I should have had a bit of, oh, I've got a tiny bit of tape here actually. So I can stick that there for just now. But what I'll do is let's turn that round and I'll get some tape and we'll just stick that down and neaten it up on the back here. So I think I had it roughly in the right in the right place. So we'll do that. Okay. And then I've got another bit here. And we'll just stick those those bits down. And once I'm, I've made sure they're secure I'm just going to chop them down. And I might just tuck a bit of wet glue under there as well, just um, so that it does stick. But we've got the tapes to sort of temporarily hold it in place whilst that is attaching. And then hopefully that should mean that we've got some flowers. I'm just going to tuck that the other way around. Yeah, that we've got some flowers sort of just dangling off the project, which I think looks really good. Okay, so now I am... I've, oh, that's... Let's shape a few more and put some down here. Um, not sure if I want, want a flower up, a flower up there as well. Let's see. No. Okay, I'm just going to let's do the same with these flowers then and then get them stuck down and I think we're probably good to go. I might find something to create a bit of texture um, in the grass area um, and I might just do a bit of detailing on the window with a silver pen just to um, yeah just to give that a bit of a more 
realistic, realistic look. But I'm absolutely loving it so far. I think it's looking, I think it's looking quite good, even if I say so myself. Right. So let's get these, let's get these down. Okay, so I'm just arranging them in like little clusters. I've just got some little butterflies here, but I don't know whether they're too... Oh, I know, I've got some in my bit box that might work better. Okay, so I've got this little butterfly, which I think um, will go quite nicely just up here, maybe. I don't know quite how that's going to stick on. <laughs> That looks all right, doesn't it? Right, and then I'm thinking that actually we could extend this bit further if we just, so I'm going to sort of partially cover that with glue there and then stick that behind our little girl there so that she's sort of between the mushrooms. And then I'm gonna do the same at this side over here as well so that we've extended the project even further. It means we've got lots of layers, things behind each other, different things like that and it, it just adds lots of extra interest so I'm just going to do that like so um, I don't know that I want to put extra texture on for the grass I think there's quite a lot going on um, already I'm just going to get my silver pen and I just want to highlight the edge of these windows with silver and just so that it's got a slightly sorry my head's in shot there just so that it's got a slightly more metallic feel and I'm going to do the edge of the the door as well and let's maybe make some almost like wood wood greens as well um just don't know what to do about the grass um I don't know should we have a bit of glitter or something um, do, 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 do. decisions, decisions. <laughs> okay, so I have this watermelon napkin, and I am thinking that if I just take the green parts off um, and scrunch these up, that that could give us a bit of interesting sort of texture. Let's see. Um, tear the tear it so that it's rough and then I'm thinking if we just popped bits and pieces of it down that that would work <laughs> who knows let's try I'm just gonna stick a bit of it down and then sort of roughly yeah it was needing something but when I was putting my full grass on um, which I tried off camera it just wasn't suiting the project but I, I still felt I wanted something on so yeah that's created, oh, yeah I like that, I'm happy, that's created a little bit of texture there, um, so nothing too fancy but it's it just all adds to the to the overall the overall look of it. Actually let's get some of the darker stuff in because this will be a shadow area so I'm just going to again put a bit of glue down and then just scrunch scrunch some of that tissue and then give it a wee, give it a wee tear and yeah, I'm happy. That has been a bit of a solution that I was looking for. So I'm pretty pleased with how this has turned out so far. So I will just finish doing this and then I will clear up my desk so that you can see it properly and I hope you have enjoyed it here. So if you have enjoyed it here, please do think about liking and subscribing. If you find me on Sam's channel, feel free to pop over and check out some of my other videos and if you found me on my channel why not check Sam's because she does make the most amazing MDF and she has some fabulous um, tutorials and projects to shares over there so I'm sure that you would absolutely love it so I'm just going to turn the camera off now and then clear my desk so that we can get a better look at how this project is looking. Okay so this is this all completed absolutely thrilled with how that has turned out. Um, yeah it's just like a little magical fantasy land absolutely I love it so thank you to Sam for providing the MDF all the details of where you can get everything will be in the description box below and I hope you like it. Okay take care thanks for spending your time with me today and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!